We're at a Cocker Bottoms Waterfowl Refuge and Wildlife Management Area, and we're talking about a lot about quail today. And you're going to hear the word early succession until you're going to puke, probably. But it's uh, we're back to looking at an area that was a lot of different areas have early successional plants in them. In this case, it was a closed canopy forest. So we got a lot of places like this that we could manage, private landowners, WMAs, and, and uh, we have more trees than all of history. So just around me here, we have uh, the Great Smoky Mountains, 540,000 acres, less than one half of 1% is opening. The Cherokee National Forest, 600,000 acres plus, less than 1% opening. Many, many of our WMAs would have thousands of acres with very little of it in opening. So we have lots of closed canopy forest. And luckily, since we're talking about quail, there's a bird that does not a forest bird at all. And it's not a grassland bird either. It is a early successional bird. But we can produce that by cutting a few trees. Here we've, we've thinned the forest. And the main thing that we're trying to manage here is light to the ground. We can control or manage these areas with fire. We were able to remove some trees, and then we came back to how we managed it, it was with fire. So those, those are pretty easy to do. You'll see the species we left, mainly white oaks, because they're really attractive to, to uh, deer and bear and all the other critters, as well as quail. They eat, they eat acorns. We talk about acorns, and so yes, that is a food source for a lot of species, but it's a short window there, like two or three months. It only hits every two to five years. So I don't, I don't think I could go on without eating for just eating a meal or two every two to five years. So in this case, we took the trees out. Sun has penetrated the forest floor. And now you see all kinds of these plants that we were talking about that are important for all species. Some of my deer hunters will, will talk about, well, man, you cut all the acorn trees out of there. So we don't, you know, the deer. Well, they're not thinking about the entire life cycle of the animal. So yes, when you're sitting in a deer stand, and you're wanting that deer to come by, I'm sure you're sitting, if there's a white oak dumping acorns, you want to be on it. And that's good. And right then they are eating acorns. But in the summer, when you're at home watching TV and air conditioning, we still have to think about the rest of the life cycle of that deer. So he's got to be eating something in the summer. And I ask people, have you ever seen a deer climb a 70 foot tree and eat the top out of it? And nobody uh, yet I've seen has ever seen that. Maybe, maybe, couple guys is drinking a lot of moonshine. Anyway, a lot of these trees we cut and we and we cord some. Actually, we cut them and count rings. And you might have a tree this big around and one this big around. And they're exactly the same age. This one, it's the dog that don't hunt. He eats the same amount of food, eats, drinks the same amount of water, but he ain't ever going to hunt. These are the ones that we're looking for, the ones that produce acorns and probably have a, a timber tree later. So th that's the ones we're looking for. So when you remove this, the dog that doesn't hunt, and let the dog that can hunt get stronger, more daylight, more water, more nutrients, it's probably going to produce more acorns. So that, that's, that's, uh, that's kind of what we're looking at in these, in these savanna type areas. First is we put fire through it. We leave species that'll, that can take fire like white oak versus red oak. You know, we have both red and white oaks here. We've got, we've got some southern red. There's some post oaks, some white oaks. We got a whole variety of oaks coming back now. Here's a problem one. Here's, here's a sweet gum coming in. So hopefully fire. Sometimes you have to use herbicide to take out some of these guys. Right now we've just used fire in this place and we've been pretty good. You see the broom sedge. Here's the, the grass, not a planted grass, and we'll be talking about grasses in just a minute. But here's one that responds. It's got great structure and for, for uh, nesting, you know, we we're, sometimes we're always concerned about quail nesting habitat. And we found out that quail will nest just about anywhere. That is a good one that they will use. We want about 30% grasses. One thing that grasses do help is with fire. And they'll actually help that fire to keep moving. So we, we like to have about 30% grasses. When you get way over that, then we start losing a lot of the foods that are beneficial, especially to quail and other species, and we might have to actually thin the grasses. Here's a, a quick example of an area that we, uh, we had some, some uh, woody sprouts that we're trying to get around, uh, rid of, so we used uh, a woody type herbicide like a garland or arsenal. In this case, we had a, a plant we don't want in, in our savanna here, and that's bicolor lespedeza. If you leave that stuff alone, it'll take over the entire place. So, we had to come in here and spot spray some of these areas. One thing that you'll notice, a lot of the, the uh, woody vegetation is, is starting to brown down. 
but we left the grasses and a lot of forbs that we wanted. Some you're going to lose sometimes depending on what herbicide type that you use, some of the plants that you want. But you have to control the problem plants or you're going to end up with nothing. So in this case, we used an herbicide versus uh, people mow, want to mow all the time. This, this herbicide leaves the structure in place so a quail can still get under here and hide and get away from predators pretty good. And we're allowing these native grasses, the, there's the broom sedge, and the forbs to come up through here. So we end up with a good structure versus a mowed place where that structure's all been removed. And usually mowing by color, you're just gonna release it. A lot of these, these sprouts that you're trying to get rid of, if you mow that, you're gonna have a root sprout. So instead of one stem, you end up with six, depending on what you're, what you're trying to do. But in this case, we're trying to get rid of some of this woody structure. And so we've herbicided it versus mowed it.